It's my feel good breakfast show. Well, South African talent are plenty, I can tell you that. In fact, the new local film Necktie Youth releases nationwide today. It's been created by and starring first time Joburg director Sibs Shongwe La Mer. Now, it, uh, it has had global success after premiering at film festivals in Tribeca, Berlin, and Sydney. And most recently, it won the best feature film uh, and best director at the Durban International Film Festival. Now, the entirely black and white film follows the antics of Johannesburg's affluent newborn generation, a kind of life that Sibs has lived and witnessed, and which he wants to then share with the rest of the world. And Sibs actually agreed to open up to us about these issues and what they mean in South Africa. Here it is, Necktie Youth. Necktie Youth addresses the hidden, desolate lives of affluent Joburg youths in the aftermath of a friend's live stream suicide. For Sibs Shingle Lamare's directorial debut, he wanted to share some of what he'd seen from his own life. Sibs, first of all, congratulations on your feature directorial debut for Necktie Youth. How has the whole experience been? Making a film at you know my age and stuff like that about something very particular to a certain demographic of people. I kind of anticipated that the film wouldn't have much of a, of, of a reach. And uh, yeah, I mean, premiering it all over the world and traveling it and also having amazing responses from people, it kind of feels, I suppose, incredible when it comes from something so personal. And the story in the film touches very close to home. You discuss some serious issues in South African youth today. What made you decide to tell the story? I feel very much patriotic in the sense that I really love this country. This generation is really interesting. There's something happening here that is a story. How relevant it is, I don't know. But it is a texture that hasn't been seen and is personal to me. I started the project at the age of 14 um, after the tragic suicide of uh, my then girlfriend. Great losses make us look around and you know analyze things a lot more. So I started writing the first uh, version of the script at about 15. It was really cathartic in a sense that I kind of, I kind of got to age with it. You decided for one of the key characters to commit suicide on Youth Day. What was your intention around that? The intention was to kind of like juxtapose the previous uh, generation of youth struggles for liberation, where I wanted to show that, yes, it is now it's still a struggle, but now we're entering the realm where it's more an existential uh, struggle. But I wanted to make that big thing that happens on the same day. The film is to start a conversation. Would you say that the film is a critique of the lack of energy in South African lives today? I, I wanted the film to feel hyperboard because I grew up like that. In the sense, like when we were 16, 17, we would kind of walk around like the streets of Joburg on a Saturday. It kind of had this hyper sense of like no direction. I had something. But a lot of my friends, they didn't really seem to have much of a desire for a future or an awareness of a future, you know? And I think that's a critically destroying thing. I ain't got no dollar bills, you know? All right, I'll organize. Yeah, ma. In this film, you bring these issues to the surface. Do you feel that they're too hidden in today's South African society? I definitely think that South Africa needs to be a little more brazen in accepting our realities. And I think the more that we actually start speaking about it, the more that we can actually see not just a democratic uh, liberation, but a uh, communion in our society that will help. An important and relevant story about our youth told by the youth is sure to spark a conversation around issues which are often hidden behind well-dressed facades.